Hello, my name's Jeff Burns. A lot of people have asked me, how did you get into Christian country music? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't always been a Christian and hadn't always sang Christian country music. I've been in country music for a long time. Uh, but a lot of people want to know my story. So I, let me give you just a few minutes and I'll tell you my story. Well, I grew up outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And I can't say that I didn't have a loving family. They were a very loving family. Uh, my dad, he did drink a little bit. Uh, they would get kind of beside themselves. I was never beaten or anything like that. <laughs> Mother, she was more of a she liked pills uh, so we grew up in a lot in a situation like that me and I have a older brother and we were alone a lot growing up because of it uh, later on in life we didn't go to church at all I didn't know much about church I had a friend around the corner from me and I would go to church with him occasionally they would have little things at the churches uh, back when we were kids that what I call church bait for the kids to get them to come to church. Well, I would go to church with him every once in a while, and that's where I would learn a little bit about the Bible and a little bit about Jesus. But I wasn't really into it. I was there for the church bait. A few years later, Mother decided that she was going to put down all the alcohol and the drugs. So she started looking for a church to get into, and what she found was a Christian science church. Uh, she got real big into the church. Uh, my brother, he was always in trouble with the law and fighting and drinking and cutting up. Dad, me and him became really good friends throughout our lives. Mom and me started going to church every once in a while. I would go with her, but I didn't understand Christian science. So I really wasn't really, I really didn't like it because I just didn't understand. Well, later on in life, mom and dad divorced. I started playing country music when I was 14 years old. And uh, that was my getaway. I loved music more than anything. It was a way for me to just get into the music and get away. I started playing guitar when I was 15 years old and I drowned myself in that got into bull riding at the same time uh, on the weekends I was at the rodeos from Friday night till Monday night and every other night I was playing the guitar learning and singing and still didn't know Jesus at 15 I started drinking a little bit of whiskey here and there not real bad I didn't get bad until I got later on in my teens and started playing bars. As I started playing bars, I started drinking a little more and more. And then some nights, it was so bad that they were carrying me off the stage. Uh, I kept on and kept on rodeoing and music. That was my life, the two together. One night I'd be rodeoing, the next night I'd be playing country music. We uh, got a record deal when I was 26 years old, or 25 years old, I'm sorry. And that lasted for one show, and the company went bankrupt. Well, Dad was my biggest supporter. There was no question about that. He uh, loved my music, loved went everywhere I went to play music he was there uh, 
I had to watch him a lot because he still drank pretty good. We uh, lost him in 1999. He passed of a sudden heart attack. He was 47 years old. A couple of years later, I lost my grandparents, which they had a lot to do with my raising because of my parents when they were on the bad side, excuse my friend, they would take me in and I spent summers and uh, spring breaks and anytime I was out of school, I'd spend it with them in Louisiana and also my other grandparents here in Burleson, Texas. So I was back and forth moved around a lot. I also enjoyed the attention. I love the attention more than anything. And my grandmother, she would just sit and listen to me sing in the back room. It was just, she would never come to my rodeos. I couldn't understand why, but she wouldn't show up to them rodeos. Well, one night I got hurt really bad and it laid me up for quite a while. But I was still determined I was gonna make it. And music or rodeo won. Well, after a few years, we, uh, I got with a good band that they pretty much tried to get control of me. <laughs> we started traveling around a lot and playing music and making albums and just living the life. We signed another record deal with Red Star Records and did a show with Little Texas and Confederate Railroad did a few and uh, that didn't last long either I wasn't apparently the record label type I was very independent and they didn't like my drinking they didn't like a lot of things that we did but the band we stuck together for a long time during the middle of all that my mother got sick and my brother went to prison. So it was pretty much me by myself. I didn't have a whole lot of support after dad that I could see, which I really did. Well, it didn't take long. When she got sick, I lost my grandmother. In the middle of it, she got cancer and I lost her on both sides within just a few years and then my stepdaughter that I raised from when she was a very young girl her and my mother passed away on the same day so it was a little shocking uh, so I was very mad at God. I didn't have much faith at all. I was, <laughs> I didn't feel like I wanted to be a Christian. I remember being in Nashville one time and I ran into Pastor Dan Duncan and I was gonna do a radio interview with him and I walked into his office and I was drunk. And I decided at that point I did not wanna do the interview on the radio because number one, I'd be embarrassed so he asked me when I was sitting in the office, why don't you do a Christian song or a gospel song? And I said, well, God's never done anything for me. And I turned around and started walking off and he said, you mark my words, you'll be back. I said, well, a lot of stuff's happened. I don't think I will. So we were out playing one day and I got really drunk. This was several years later and it was weekend of Easter and a buddy of mine came over and said get up we're gonna go to church I said I am not going to no church he said come on get up we're going to church so he woke me up I finally got up and got coffee got dressed and we went to a church in Alvarado Texas and it was under a tent, but I was sweating. I was hung over, it was hot. And the pastor started preaching. 
and it seemed to me that he was preaching directly to me and calling me out on everything that I'd been doing wrong. So I looked at my buddy and I said, I cannot believe you called this preacher and told him all this stuff. He said, man, I've never heard this preacher before in my life. I don't know him. And so I looked at him and I was like, uh-huh. That's, that's just crazy to me. I didn't understand it. So when it was over, I got up and I walked up to the preacher. And I said, uh, how did you know everything? All the stuff about me that you were saying, because you were looking right at me and preaching. He goes, son, I've never met you in my life. I don't even know who you are. He said, but I'm glad you got something out of it. Well, that kind of piqued my curiosity. So, the next week, I got a little bit more curious. So, the next week, I went back to the church, and I listened again, and it was the same thing. The next week, did it again. And now, I started getting interested in the sermons, started getting is interested in the Bible and, and the gospel. And I read the Bible a little bit when I was a kid because I, I loved the stories. I didn't follow the gospel too much. I loved the story of Jesus. Didn't believe it, but I did love the story. As I kept going to church, my curiosity, would I would get more and more curious about the Bible. So I would pick up the Bible and start reading Scripture here and there. And I remember going to church on Christmas Eve. Well, Christmas Eve, that's the most emotional time for any man all around the world every person no matter what religion you are what you believe that night of all nights you believe you have faith that one night and the Holy Spirit grabbed me and I felt it and I started bawling that was the first time that I felt that what I'd been looking for my whole life that's when I knew I was going to be a Christian I kept going to church, and I kept listening to the sermons. I'd get more and more interested, just so into the sermons and so into the Bible and listening to the preacher preach about it and made it so interesting. It was so different than what I'd ever felt before in my life. So a buddy of mine that passed away not long ago, from cancer he was our songwriter he wrote the song thank you that a lot of you might have heard well it was almost exactly my life and I decided I wanted to record that and put it on Christian radio well a friend of ours Mary Faye Jackson heard it and she wanted me to come on her show, which I still wasn't saved. I still wasn't sure about Christianity. I was very interested, and I was coming that way, and God was talking, and I was feeling it. And I went on her show, show and I sang it, and that's when I felt it again. It was just so powerful. I knew, I knew then I needed to get saved, that this was no joke. So two weeks later, I got saved. And I don't even know how to explain it now. The blessings just keep coming and coming and coming. It's just, it's crazy. The, I met a woman a few years later after I got saved. And I got away from the church. And I started drinking a little bit. And I was partying and I was still playing. And for a lot of y'all that don't know, I'm also a treasure hunter, so I was gone a lot for months at a time, diving a lot of these old shipwrecks <clears throat> and hunting treasure on top of everything else that I'm going through and doing. But I got away from God. I was 
scrolling through Facebook one night when I was in Greenville, Texas, and I seen a picture of this woman. Never seen her before in my life, did not know her, and I just was mesmerized. And I remember God, not God, I remember Granddad telling me my whole life that, son, when you see that one person that you're supposed to be with, you're going to know that second. And I had a buddy with me at the time, and I looked at him and I said, I'm going to marry that woman. And he about had a heart attack. He just could not believe that the marriage word came out of my mouth. And uh, he said, well, let me see. And I showed him a picture. I never knew this woman, never met this woman, nothing. So I started liking some of her posts on social media. And I would message her every now and then and just comment on certain posts. Then we started talking a little bit. And we finally, over a few months, exchanged phone numbers. And then we met. And after we met, and uh, I will have to tell that story later. That's for another time. But we have not hardly been apart a day since. A couple of weeks later, we're watching a movie and just relaxing at home or at she came to my house and we're just sitting there watching a movie chuck day calls me out of nowhere i haven't talked to this man in a few years and he said it's time i said it's time for what he said you need to be in nashville in two weeks we're going to start your new christian album i said chuck i've quit music i've quit everything this i'm not I'm not ready. He said, you're ready. I got the sign that in two weeks you'll be in Nashville. Well, I looked over at Robbie, and I said, well, we're going to Nashville in two weeks. She said, I'm ready. Let's go. <clears throat> well, we went to Nashville, and we recorded our first two tracks. You Can Always Come Back Home and Child of the Light. When, we, when I heard them songs and just the emotion that was in the song and what it was, the emotion when I sang the songs, I knew then this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to come back home. Exactly what you can always come back home says in the song. It's just, it's point blank. And I knew right then I need to get back to God because I've strayed. I've gotten away from it and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, I got to get back. We got back from Nashville, and we just got song after song after song sent to us. <clears throat> we've been in the studio recording, and we've been all over the country singing and playing. The blessings just keep coming and coming and coming. Now back to Robbie. I did not know the blessing she was. When I finally come back home where I'm supposed to be, I realize something. I've known this woman my whole life. Not just in spirit, but literally my whole life. If I didn't know her, then we've passed by each other off and on our whole lives. I spent my whole, uh, half my life in Louisiana in the summers spring breaks with my grandparents well come to find out they were just a few miles away from her parents my aunt and her mother were best friends growing up in a graduating class of less than 12 we have met a lot of our friends after she moved to Texas and moved up here a lot of we've had a lot of friends that were friends together and we did not know that come to find out her daddy was a preacher her <clears throat> brother is a preacher 
she's brought me back to God. That's what I needed, was I needed that boost and that blessing from God to show me that he's real. And I know for sure, without a doubt, that it was a special gift that was given to me. And everything that's happened in the last very few years, I've burned a lot of bridges. I've hurt a lot of people throughout my life. And there's a lot of things that I can't make right. But in the last couple of years, I have turned everything around and I'm doing better and I'm coming back home. My name is Jeff Burns. If y'all want to hear the rest of the story, come to one of my singings. Come see me sometime. Just message me. I'll tell you the rest of it. And uh, if you want to book me, uh, you can call me at 682-276-4326. Or you can email me burns.jeff46 at yahoo.com Thank you everybody. God bless and y'all have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you.